Billy Bragg and Frank Turner, it's a pleasure to meet you. Nice uh, to meet you, Marco. So, well, uh, you're both teaming up for Shelter's Christmas Appeal and about to start busking here at Queen's Cross to raise awareness of the issue. What exactly is the message that you're trying to get across? Well, 80,000 children are going to be uh, seeing Christmas morning homeless. And we think in a society like ours, a rich society like ours, particularly at Christmas, this really shouldn't be happening. So Shelter are running a campaign to draw attention to that. And we're trying to help them to publicise that. And, you know, so, yeah, and great, great cash as well to kind of contribute to that campaign because they have a lot of frontline service now, which is fantastic and commendable. Um, you both playing a sold out gig tomorrow night at the glorious Wilton's Hall. Uh, for shelter as well, obviously. Uh, this is the precursor to it. You're looking forward to the to the night? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I've never actually played Wilton's before. I'm really excited because it's a place with a lot of history. And, you know, it's like the last real music that's left, really. Yeah, and, um, yeah. I have a, a big interest in that kind of period of music history. You know, um, it's a nice reminder that there was stuff before rock and roll. I feel like quite often in music history, people go, "There was nothing," and then there was Elvis, and it's just not no, true. There was this whole other world. What's special about Wilkins is it's a very early version of the musical. I mean, you know, there are still old sort of musical type theatres like the Hackney Empire, but they've, they've, they've changed. Wilkins is really as it was, you know, when you walk the boards there, you're more or less doing the sort of thing that Dan Leno did, you know, Bill Titch. And I don't know about how Frank feels, but certainly I feel the way I do rock and roll, I feel I have a lot in common, you know, with. Uh, I'm as much Max Miller as I am Bob Dylan when I go out and do more things, so it's always great to play those old ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah superb, definitely. Yeah. There's a lot of parallels that can be drawn between the, the two of you, to be honest. Both the worthy social commentators, hence today's performance, obviously. Is it especially important, especially this time of year, I suppose, to get to raise these issues? Well, I think Christmas particularly is a time that, you know, a season of goodwill to all, you know, that's the message behind Christmas, that's why I like Christmas. You know, you can buy uh, Christmas cards that say peace on earth, goodwill to all, you know, that's kind of like sums up my politics really. So, without wishing to politicise Christmas, yeah, it is a time when I think we should think of other people other than ourselves. So, uh, a campaign like this with Shelter, uh, I think it's, it just fits in the season really well. Yeah, yeah, well, well, you know, yeah. Shelter is a particular cause that you've both sort back for many years, but why shelter in particular? Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I think as Bill said at the beginning, um, there's something about homelessness specifically. So there, are, there are many issues in our world and lots of things that could be done to improve the lot, but that's why I love all the rest of it. But there's something so stark about homelessness in a wealthy society. You know what I mean? um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I just feel like it, it can't be that complicated to do something about it. You know I mean? At least, and it's, it, it's something that we should all work towards. So, and Christmas morning, you know, you think of kids, you know, Christmas to some extent, the morning experience is about kids, and to think that there are kids who are facing Christmas without a home, you know, whose families are struggling to such an extent they don't have anywhere to live, as Frank said, in a society such as ours, um, you know, the lack of, of affordable housing and the lack of social housing as well is a real scandal. And this is, you know, this is an issue that's been running for a long time, where the, where the blame that lies, we could argue about that all day, but where the responsibility to do something lies with all of us, particularly in a big city like London. So hopefully with the bus this afternoon and with the gig we'll able to be able to write, raise some money and some solidarity from, uh, from people with the homelessness and with the homeless in Christmas. Yeah, no. But uh, Billy, as the elder statesman of the two, <laughs> like, do you see... <laughs> Frank Turner as a sort of... You're my sort of statement. Yeah. But uh, the other statement of the two, do you see uh, Frank as a sort of a natural successor to your sort of style? Well, I don't, no, no, I think these are very, very different times. You know, the times that I came through were so close to punk that um, the experience of punk and the politics of punk still resonated in the 80s. Frank came through a little bit of that with a million dead, but it's a, it's a different generation and they see the world differently. I don't expect Frank to articulate his feelings about the world in exactly the same way that I did. It shouldn't really be like that. You know, each generation, as Joe Strong once said, each generation has to find their own way to deal with the blues. But the fact that Frank and I can find common cause yeah, over yeah. this, that's what it's really about. That, that because his generation, I believe, are as political as my generation. They just an exp expressing it in different ways. Yeah, yeah. I think as well, I mean, like, I'm going to be quite nice about it. You can, you can be like <laughs> nice about me, Frank. I, I think my, my, my main regard for Bill in life is a songwriter. I think that's an incredible songwriter and a very inspirational one at that. And, um, 
I take, I draw a beauty on that, and if I ever write a song that's going to leave my subject's tears, I'll buy myself a beer. <laughs> Thing to say. But in the end, you know, you find you, you really don't want to judge people by their their politics. You judge by whether they're willing to step up. I'm yeah, yeah, stepping yeah. up, you know, Definitely. and it has done. I mean, this is the first time he and I have met in, in the, um, for a good cause. So you know that you know a lot of the things that we did in the 1980s were based around the same people stepping up to support the miners, to support rockets, racism, ice against the part Nicaragua, you know, you knew there was a bunch of people. So when we wanted to do something like Red Wedge, it was simple to find those people. And I knew that when I wanted to do, you know, we want to do something for shelter, you know, yeah. Frank, we're already both yeah. doing stuff over here and there yeah. anyway. So. Particularly if someone who can come and busk. Not yeah, everyone's yeah, food yeah, yeah. you know. I mean, I basically fundamentally am a busker. Everything I do is, is a form of busking, including this interview. So it's a natural, it's a natural for me. And Frank is also in that request. Frank is also in this in that tradition. You know, we can you know, I've no doubt that he can step up and find, you know, our puzzle songs we can sing together as we have. So you know, that's where the connection is. Definitely the last time I saw you for example the bus was um Occupy London, well, busking yeah, yeah, yeah. anyway. Yeah. That was a great um I as well. But you know, the, 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 both your latest albums, Take Deck Art and uh, Two For Now, were both great. But which one is better? Well, I think, <laughs> I think fundamentally, the thing about them is they both begin with T. That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the great thing about them. There's a great meeting to mine here, yeah. I think we're both. We're both. <laughs> We're, we'll be finished in two minutes. Right, right. We'll all be done. We'll be done. <laughs> well, my, my album, undoubtedly, in its CD form, is a better beer man than Frank's album. <laughs> I, think, I think it's extremely bad manners to comment on your own to so pass qualitative judgment on your own material. So, on that level, I'm going to say yours. How, how, how great is it we can both put out cracking albums in the same year? Exactly. Well, there you go. No, no, it's superb. That's That's Thanks a lot for your time. And just to finish on a, on a musical note, what would you say is each other's favourite song of your own? Well, I've, we've just been playing together, Frank and I, have just been rehearsing some songs. And his, uh, the song that uh, we're going to sing uh, tonight, uh, tomorrow night together, I can now put as an earworm and I can't get it out of my head. So. I'm oh, sorry, sorry. Exactly, um, yeah. I, I, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, leave my stuff. Incidentally, here's something that you didn't know because they cut it. That fuck the commitment. Yeah. I did a, I did a sort of traditional uh, Dagger tuning finger pick cover of Leave My Stuff. I'd love to hear that. Yeah. And Maybe you're quite a bit of Tristan. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, the thing I thought they would cut. <laughs> They didn't cut. They put they didn't in a cut. documentary. So I have to apologise. For the record, I've never pissed at anybody's no. fault. No. But be careful with your beer and your girlfriend. Anything else you'd like to say to, um, to news and news watchers? Yes, goodbye. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks, man. Pleasure. Thanks a lot. Cheers. 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 Cheers.